Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. Before we get into the news this week, I want to make a correction from last week's video. Last week I talked about these interesting GameCube LCD mods, and there are two of them that I'm aware of. One of them here is done by Tech Done Poorly, and that's the one I talked about first. But then I talked about another one here from Laser Bear that looked like a pretty similar idea. To my knowledge, these two different mods were done separately without any sort of collaboration at all. I don't think that I did a good enough job differentiating between these two different projects. It may have sounded like the one from Tech Done Poorly was made by Laser Bear, but I should have done a better job giving attribution to Tech Done Poorly here first instead of going right into Laser Bears. Sometimes I don't always mention the name of the person that I'm talking about when I cover these posts, especially on Twitter. And I have to admit that I'm more biased to talk about somebody's name if it's somebody that I recognize, or I think that the community that I'm talking to will recognize them over someone else. So I want to give an apology to Tech Done Poorly. I should have done a better job attributing this first mod properly just to him, and then separated that from the Laser Bear mod so there was no confusion. Okay, first news item this week, we have an interesting post from Retro Gamer Store. This looks like a replacement PCB for the Famicom. Looking at these side-by-side -side photos, it looks like there's an original Famicom board on the left and the replacement one is on the right. This looks like another one-to-one -one reproduction, sort of in the style of Red Herring and the Open Tendo. Red Herring has been working on a one-to-one -one replacement board for the Famicom, and I'll make sure to cover that more when there's more information released for that. As far as I know, this is going to be more like the Open Tendo in the sense that it is a true one-to-one -one reproduction and it's not going to be relayed out with modern components or anything. Although you will be able to use new components for this, Otherwise, really, what's the point of building a brand new board if you're going to use the old components? Although you will have to use some of the original components like the Famicom CPU and PPU and a couple of other things, I'm sure. It looks awesome in their clear Famicom shells. So if you're interested in a brand new Famicom board for the Famicom, Retro Gamer Store is going to have an option coming soon. Next, Todd Gill has uploaded his 3D printed Mr. Case to printables. So now if you want to print your own Mr. Case, you'll be able to do that. I really like the look of this case. It's pretty minimalistic and it looks like there's space to mount a Noctua fan. So it will probably be cool and quiet as well. I do want to mention that Todd's case looks kind of similar to Mr. Add-on's aluminum case. This is the case that I have for my Mr. But I understand that these aluminum cases are pretty expensive. Getting a decked out mister, including this aluminum case and all the things in it is really expensive. Todd Gill's case now is a good alternative for people who don't want to spend a ton of money on the aluminum case but you obviously have a 3D printer already. So if you already have a 3D printer and your mister is just sitting naked on your desk, then check out this 3D printed case from Todd Gill. Now, I don't have much information about this next post from Zwenergy. He's posted a Game Boy Advance SP that is using as a Bluetooth controller, and it's connected to a Steam Deck, but the Bluetooth controller part is what is interesting. I haven't gotten around to finishing my video of building the Intech Gaming Game Boy Advance HDMI mod, and at this point, I'm not really sure that I'm going to do that. However, the big win from that kit is this Game Boy Advance replacement PCB controller thing. So when you take the Game Boy Advance motherboard out of the Game Boy Advance and use that in the Intech Gaming kit, they give you a PCB that you can put into that Game Boy Advance shell with the controller cable. This is a Super Nintendo controller cable so that you can use the Game Boy Advance as a controller. It's a shame that nobody is selling PCBs to make Game Boy Advance controllers for yourself. So I was very interested when Zwenergy posted this picture of using a Game Boy Advance SP. Like I said, there's not a lot of details about this, but I am very curious if this is going to be easy to do and if it's going to be compatible with Blue Retro. If that's the case, then this will be really awesome to play Game Boy Advance consoleizer games. So I'm super excited to hear more information from Zwenergy about how this is going to be possible. Speaking of wireless Game Boy Advance controllers, a couple of people have been tweeting about inside gadgets this week, and I found that they have a wireless GB controller cartridge thing. So if we check out their website, they actually have two different variations of this. They have one for the original Game Boy, and I can imagine a Game Boy Color, and they have one that will fit inside of a Game Boy Advance that just has a smaller cartridge. These are 2.4 gigahertz adapters, so these won't work with Bluetooth. You have to use special dongles that they sell on their site as well. But these cartridges fit inside of either a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance, and then using those 2.4 gigahertz adapters, you can use them in a bunch of different consoles. 
The list they have here are, I guess, PC, so you can use it with USB. So that means that this will probably work with Mr., but I'm not, I haven't verified that. The NES, the Super Nintendo, the N64, the GameCube, the Wii, and the NES and SNES Classic. So if you come down here, you can choose which version that you want, either the Game Boy version or the Game Boy Advance version, and then you have to buy separately the adapters to use with the different consoles. The only downside that I can see to this is you still have to use the battery inside the Game Boy or Game Boy Advance versus the Intech Gaming Kit, the Game Boy Advance PCB they have is wired so you can just plug it into your console or whatever you wanna do. You have to rely on batteries for both the Zwenergy one as well as this Inside Gadgets one. Speaking of Inside Gadgets, they have another post this week. This time it is a Wonder Swan flash cart. So this is pretty awesome timing, especially since I was talking a couple of weeks ago about wanting a Wonder Swan flash cart for the upcoming Zwenergy Wonder Swan consoleizer. So there's not much information right now, but I would be interested in picking one of these up if it has, you know, near 100% game compatibility for the Wonder Swan. Next up this week, Pointer Function is working on a 3D model for a replacement case for the PC Engine. I think also he said that he's going to be working on a Core Graphics 1 and 2 replacement because those cases are obviously pretty similar and they're similar form factor. But this is going to be pretty awesome if you want to 3D print your own replacement case for the PC Engine or the Core Graphics. And I can imagine if you have a resin printer and you can print in clear resin, you might even be able to make a transparent one that looks like the rendering here. The PC Engine and the Core Graphics are like some of the only consoles that I can imagine you being able to easily 3D print if you have like a normal size 3D printer. So when this model is finished, I think this would be a pretty cool test of your 3D printing skills if you want to try to print one of these out yourself. Next up this week, we have some interesting information about the Kunai GC, is that how you pronounce it? Which is an IPL replacement GameCube mod from ManCloud. Actually, Voltar did a live stream where he tried to repair a GameCube that was modded with one of these mods from Xtrems. So if you're interested, you can go and check out that on Voltar's YouTube channel. Voltar brought up some pretty interesting points about just the way that you install the Kunai GC mod. Basically, there is a little quick solder board that solders onto the IPL chip of the GameCube. That's this little square up here. And then the rest of the mod chip solders to that little QSB. So there's nothing really, no wires or anything that you're supposed to solder to the IPL mod. So it's a kind of a divergence from something like the Pico Boot mod where you have to solder wires or eventually flex cables to the IPL directly. This is sort of mounted directly to the IPL chip with a little QSB. However, that's kind of the downside also to this mod. Now, I don't have one of these myself. I'm just judging by what Voltar had done in his live stream and just based on the pictures here. But the entire mod is mounted to that QSB and directly to the IPL chip. I'm sure it's probably sturdy enough. However, there's, I don't think there's really anything to support it on this bottom left side here. It's really just hanging off of the IPL chip, at least the one that Voltar demoed in his live stream. With that being said, I don't think this mod is really that big and it's tucked away inside of the shell, inside of the shield of the GameCube as well. So I don't think anything is gonna really harm this once it's installed. And the other thing I'm not really sure about is whether or not this is going to be firmware upgradable or not. I, I'm not sure if that really is going to matter. Like once you're booting into Swiss, you can just update Swiss. But if there's ever gonna be any feature updates to this mod, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to flash it. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of negatives, but I'm sure there's gonna be a place for this mod. I think one of the benefits is that there are no cables or anything. You don't have to worry about whether or not you're gonna melt wires, and you don't have to worry about mount where this is gonna mount because it mounts directly to the board. So I do think that there will be a place for this mod for people who don't wanna think about cutting wires or anything. They just wanna solder the mod to the board and then forget about it. Next, it looks like Bordy has finally published his N64 Advance 2, which is an internal HDMI mod for the N64. Now, I know I talked about this a really long time ago, probably six months or almost a year ago at this point, but now it's finally available on the GitHub repository. So you can go to the GitHub, download the Gerbers and the build material stuff and order the PCBs and all the components and build one of these yourself. And that's probably the biggest downside to this mod is it's not really gonna be available for sale until somebody actually produces a bunch of these and starts selling them, which I think will be allowed because I don't think Bordy has open source non-commercial licenses when he does his projects, but I'll have to double check that. So unless somebody starts to produce these and sell them, it looks like this is gonna be a pretty difficult assembly process and flashing process 
to create one of these yourself. Still, it's a really good job from Bordy for developing this and to open source it for the community. We have another new roadmap from Gamebox, and this time there is an interesting new mod on the list. I'm just gonna jump down to the part that I thought was interesting, and that is going to be the addition of a new, another new N64 HDMI mod called the 64HD. Here's some quick information about the 64HD. So it's going to be an internal HDMI solution for the N64. It says it's no cut compatible, but I'm pretty sure that this is a full size HDMI mod, unlike the mini HDMI mods on the Ultra HDMI and the N64 Digital. It's based off of the GBHD Advanced code base, so I think that means it'll have similar features to the GBHD Advance. So I don't know if that means that there's not gonna be that many choices for resolutions, although I think it was like 480p, 720p, and then 1080i. But I'm unsure how it's going to compare with some of the other N64 mods like the Ultra HDMI and the N64 Digital. But their goal is to produce these and keep them in stock, so that's a little bit of a different thought process when you're developing these things. You're kind of thinking long-term, finding what, uh, FPGAs and things that you can use now to produce this so that they're going to be available in the near future. Postman actually has some renders of the PCB. There's nothing really to gleam here because it's not really populated by anything. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be for a full size HDMI port. I know you might be thinking we already have a bunch of N64 HDMI mods. However, they're not really available. The Ultra HDMI is super hard to get. The N64 Digital, I believe they're trying to come out with that soon, but it's not currently available right now. And Bordy's mod is kind of DIY, you have to put it together yourself. So if it's true that they'll be able to produce them and keep producing them, then I think a lot of people are gonna be interested in this 64 HD mod. And for the big story this week, we have a mod from Stanislav Parhamovich, they're from Russia, that came completely out of left field. This post is from a few weeks ago, but it's a little PCB that looks like you can mount the Sega Genesis VDP directly to this. And it says here that they're working on a 240p to 1080p upscaler prototype for the Genesis. Well, fast forward to about a week ago and they uploaded this YouTube video that this will be an internal HDMI mod for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. So it sounds like it's going to output in 1080p. Here it is side by side with an RGB monitor on the left and the HDMI output on the right. I guess that means that it's going to be able to output both RGB and HDMI at the same time which is pretty cool when you switch between resolutions the two different a couple of different resolutions that the genesis has it's not going to drop the output as well it also supports 4 by 3 and 16 by 9 i'm not really sure about the 16 by 9 i don't know if that means it's going to stretch the output and i'm not really sure about advanced features like if you're going to be able to choose the resolution or if it's just going to be 1080p and pretty much that's it which i'm not complaining because i think 1080p now is a solid resolution especially since that kind of fits nicely into 4k I'm actually really excited about this mod. I think some of the older consoles like the Super Nintendo and the NES and now the Genesis, they don't really get a lot of love when it comes to built-in HDMI upscalers. And I know a lot of people say that you can just use RGB cables and a retro tank or something to upscale it. But keep in mind that not everybody has the space for that. And the fact that the scaler is built in just makes it infinitely more portable just to pick up your Genesis and the power brick and the, and the cartridge and just go to your buddy's house and plug it in instead of having to bring your Genesis and your scaler and like 20 cables. It's easier just to grab something that has a built-in HDMI mod and go over somewhere. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you wanna see HDMI mods for the older consoles? like the NES and the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. I know that there was the high def NES for the NES, but that's pretty much unobtainium now. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's it for this week, but check out this video where we talked about 8-Bit Mod's latest announcement.